just out of curiosity, have you seen pushing the needle too far, too much complexing? In the sense of a side dress, like a wide drop? Because that's one of the things that I think about. If we're doing a wide drop application, should we do a... I'm fine with a quart rate. I think that's that's yeah. great. But the moment, I mean, pushing like a gallon or a gallon and a half, if we have a soil that's been corn on corn and has has a load of carbon yeah. and now we're dosing that nutrient with more carbon, do you see any, have you seen any detrimental effects of that nitrogen releasing, potassium releasing, so on and so forth? I have not seen, you know, we always try to break things. So I'm constantly throwing gallons out. Okay. Just... Yep. Just to see what happens. And so I've never seen a negative effect to gallons of fulvic or gallons of, of humic acid. Okay. Um, but I see very little benefit over two quart. Um, but so it's more of a, yeah, ROI economic. Yep. 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 Where I have seen some issues is going to these amino acid hydrolysate products because okay. there's a ton of awesome, you know, uh, Google, the internet, <laughs> Grok, yeah, uh, Chat GTP, <laughs> yeah, go all Boy, day long. They can, they can send you down some awesome research papers, you know, cited and sourced in agronomic yes. journals, yes, about different hydrolysates, amino acid profiles, and the stimulation effect. Um, and so we've seen a few detrimental effects where we've tried adding hydrolysates byproducts or amino acids to a humic or fulvic. Where okay. The goal was to stimulate the root, to st stimulate fine feeder roots, um, add plant health benefits. But what we can find is, is all these types of products like that, they can turn on different pathways in the plant. And depending on the temperature, the moisture, whether you're in a Delta P or a Delta yeah. P, yeah. that energy can go a lot of different ways. So I've seen some detriments when I've tried to stimulate the root. And a lot of times my, my thought, our thought process was, I want to stimulate that root, reflush a bigger root to get more nutrients late in the season. And uh, that, that doesn't always, you know, two plus two equal four there, I guess, you know, you can go a lot of different ways. Well, and like you said, we're not saying that the hydrolysis don't work. It's, no. it's more of, if you're doing trials on your farm with those products, not only is it the rate and the timing of the crop. What was the weather? Yeah. Because if it was a 60 degree morning and it was cloudy and never got above 75, that stimulation, like you were saying, could totally change versus something that it gets 95 degrees by 10 o'clock or by 11 o'clock and you oh. applied that morning. It's a totally different signal to that plant. And, if you, and you know, yeah, there's a lot of benefits that's going to come from this stuff. But uh, as a farmer, I would say keep notes. Yes. What was the application? Was it hot and sunny um, or was it cloudy and cool? Because that, in a lot of cases, what we're finding in, in the behind-the-scenes testings we're doing can redirect how that product looks. And it's by crop type. It's by environment, temperature, all the things you listed. Yeah. So, um, you know, our goal as a company behind the scenes is to break all this down, do the genetic testing, understand okay this does photosynthetic pathways this has antioxidant support this one turns on metabolism so when we get the environmental conditions and we're locked into cool cloudy gray days well what do you want to do in a cool cloudy gray day i want to turn on photosynthesis i want to turn on yeah, photosynthesis it's pathways. Straight, yeah <laughs> so we know what to deploy to you know the the ultimate goal is is to increase success yes you know and and, <laughs> and because there's a lot of value in this stuff but i think it can if we're not careful we can give it a really bad taste. And, and as a company, we've been guilty ourselves, not knowing the intricacies. And so yeah. that's why we've taken this approach of, of diving a little deeper within, within a lot of these products. So. Well, and I, I guess that's what I'm most excited for. I mean, this is kind of a, a start of, you know, different ways we work together when it comes to research, when it comes to yeah. education, you know, all those different pieces, but it's just, just, goes back to the the honest we we want to make sure what we're we want to know that no or when it doesn't work is just as much as when it does work yeah you know and, and all those details they're so important but are so easily can be overlooked and you know as i want to share this i was uh we we hired a consultant to consult with us on gene expression and how okay. a plant communicates with its environment within 
growth, defense, and reproductive, how that plant actually works. And it's it's been eye-opening, but the, the one thing I brought to her, I said, I had a farmer last year. He used our um, 0013 um, potassium product in his side dress, yep. and he had a 120-acre field with five hybrids across it. Wow. Okay. okay, so he had five hybrids, and then he Y-dropped each hybrid with the potassium mix with his uh, nitrogen sulfur and basically left a check in every single hybrid. And so the potassium addition under three hybrids was um, nine to 15 bushel. So wow. I was yeah. for eight dollars and yeah, ninety cents an acre. I was sign like, me up. <laughs> that's that's great. Yeah. Two hybrids were zero. Wow. So I I in this conversation as we're picking her brain, I said, well, what what would cause that? She's like, well, within breeding hybrid breeding, that those two hybrids could have had, you know, better K infinity in the soil, and because of a male or female down <laughs> yep. the line. Or it could have had a more robust root system that just explored more of the soil's volume to have a better K uptake curve. That's how intricate agronomy is. And so I, you know, my eyes are like, oh, what are we up against that? You know, how, yeah, am, how am I going <laughs> to add that to the list? Add Thank you. The- <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're looking for things um, to be more efficient, to reduce loss. Um, and this in season fertility stuff is, I think, in. If we're fortunate enough to live long, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's going to be a standard practice um, due to a whole host of things, um, better quality of the crop, yeah. um, less less loss into our water on, on certain nutrients. So it's uh, I think you find what works consistently. What what brings consistency to yield over a eight ten year period, and uh, what drives the the best bang for our buck within applied fertility and splitting it up and putting fertility right when the crop wants it it's it's pretty a no-brainer to me long term yeah well i think that's what most excites me um for the future of the industry is that's what's going to move us forward just period and having that that approach of testing and understanding um gosh that'd be a big database for every hybrid right but yeah um what are common principles? What are common threads um, to help move the needle for guys? Yeah. You know, and uh, we all know with times like right now, people are looking at ROI. So if you if you have some deep topsoil, you know, at least tr- try yeah. a section, try an area. We've been sold for, I mean, I remember going back to the meeting with the fertility guy, the co-op with my grandpa. I mean, we on these fields are low, so we should do a maintenance and build program and build your bank. Yep. You know, that, that has been preached. Well, a bank account is nice to work both directions, yeah. you know. <laughs> Every once in a while, it's time yeah. to withdraw. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just know, though, yep. if that tank gets to zero, you got you, you, you to gotta put the pounds, you know. I mean, can you have efficiencies in season? 100%. Correct. But if the... If you only got ten dollars, but you need a hundred, you got to put some money in before right. you're, you're going to be able to do anything like that. It's a definite exchange. Yeah, yeah. So, but the the ending message to me is we do have some resilience. Yes. we can insulate ourselves under high price fertilizers. Um, there's there's some ships and tricks we can utilize to uh, to make us more profitable. Yeah. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major podcast platforms. Um, We're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content 